Hey guys, what's up? So a lot of you guys have asked me how I, um, I treatment plan simple cases. So I know that not everybody's doing like big all on four cases in their office and what's really practical might be just how to, how to uh, plan like a basic implant surgery. So today I had the perfect consultation to show you. Um, so I'll show you the, the clinical pictures and some of the x-rays and how I plan the case. All right, so this is the consultation that I saw this morning. You can see she's got kind of like a class three going on. She's got a crossbite. She's got a few missing teeth with broken root tips. And so in general, she just wants to replace the missing teeth. She, she even wants an all on four actually for the upper arch. I'm gonna show you how I kind of evaluate these spaces. I use my fingers just to kind of evaluate the thickness first, just to check the mobility on the teeth. All right, so another thing that I look for is the vertical space. So I, um, if you notice, there's like a little blue line right here that's appearing. Uh, so I check that out and see if there's enough space for a tooth. Uh, a friend of mine told me that tissue is the issue, but the space makes the case. So that's what I look for right here. You don't want to place an implant and not be able to restore it. So let's, let's go ahead and take a look at a, a pano now and see how I plan the case. All right, so we're gonna start by looking at this area right up here. We got some extracted root, or some root tips to be extracted. And it looks like, you know, I'm not really sure where this root right here ends, if it ends right here or ends right here. Um, and so by the looks of it, we still do have room to place implants. This one over here, I'm not so sure. And then we can do like a little bridge over here or something. And so now let's look at the other side. We have another root tip right here. And it looks like well, for sure we have some bone to engage right there with the apical portion of our implant. And put a nice little crown on there. Down below, you also have some retained roots as you guys saw in the clinical photos. And um, what I'm gonna look for now is the um, the IA nerve, so we got it right here. Here's a little foramen, and um, so it looks like we definitely have some room to place our implant. Right, looks like we have maybe like more than 10 millimeters. So we'll place like a 10 millimeter implant, and we have enough space here for it'll be kind of a fatter crown. All right, so. Um, that's a, it's a great perspective, like overall perspective from a pano, but now let's look at the cone beam to see a little bit more clearly what's going on, especially in this area right here. All right, so here we have the cone beam for the patient. So let's look at the upper right molar, those are that um, root, the retained root tip. So let's look at it right here. You can see that um, that root tip does go pretty far and you only have, let's, let's measure that, you only have like like two millimeters of bone and that's like really soft bone. So um, no good in my book anyway for immediate placement. So I would extract that, graft that and, and then it'd wait. Um, so let's look at this, this next site. So scrolling over to the next tooth. Remember we were gonna do a bridge there. And so there's one more retained root. Where is it? Yeah, there it is. All right, so this retained root it's um it's pretty short and we still do have bone past it right so this root ends like right here and there's like a little periapical infection here that you can kind of see and then there's still plenty of bone to engage 13 millimeters and so let me scroll this. yeah so there's still plenty of bone past it i think i was a little bit too close to the adjacent tooth so i'm going to back up a little bit so like right around here is where I'd want to place my implant. The retained root tip is a little bit more mesial, so I'm gonna place it just a little bit more distal, like right there. And I'm gonna measure the bone volume here. There's a periapical infection right here, so I'm gonna stay away from that. So the implant would go here, so that's about nine millimeters deep, and it's about, let's say, what is that, almost six millimeters wide. So let me just move that. Yeah, and so that's that's deep enough for an for an implant, but because you have this peri periapical infection, 
I feel like you might have a defect here on the facial. And um, this is a little bit thin for an implant. I mean, you might place like a 3.75 and um, you'd have one millimeter of bone on each side. Uh, so it's, it's just enough. Um, but still, I think to get a good outcome, I might do this one delayed placement just because we got this periapical infection here. And for that, for the site right posterior to it, I'm gonna do delayed placement anyway. So that way we'll just graft the whole area and then place both implants uh, together after it's all healed up. So let's look at the other side. I'm just scrolling everything over. All right, here we go. So here on this other side, you also see the, the retained root tip and the peri periapical infection afterwards, or at, uh, apical to it. So I'm just gonna measure from the bone level to the, to the floor of the sinus. It's about 10 millimeters, maybe a little bit more. Um, you know, I think you can place an implant into a site that has a pretty well-contained periapical infection, but I'm, I'm really preferring not to, uh, especially with, with about this size, I can get it cleaned out and I can do a nice graft and I can wait and I would know that that site's gonna turn out really nice afterwards. Um, especially given that this root tip is kind of like by the buckle right here, it's kind of angled towards the buckle. I might lose some of this bone. I'd rather just pull it, clean it really well, graft it, and, um, and place the implant another day. So let's go and look at the, the site down below for just a quick second. So here I am in the cross section. So as I'm scrolling it, if you're looking, um, so looking around this area, you can kind of see, so you, you scroll it to get a better view. You can see where the where the nerve goes through. So as I scroll it, you see there's like just this little tunnel. That's where the nerve is. And that's an easy way to, um, to be able to get your reference for measuring. So let me measure from the nerve. The nerve is right here. And to the crest of the ridge, it's right there, 13 millimeters. And so you want to make sure you're at least two millimeters away. So I'd place a 10 millimeter implant. This one I feel like might be a better candidate for immediate placement. Um, so let me just look at the rest of it here. Yeah, so this one is a better candidate for immediate placement because you have plenty of bone after the, um, the apex of the root and you have plenty of width buccal lingually and a lot of space uh, before the nerve. So this one I'd consider doing. All right, so after all of our meticulous planning, the patient decided that she wants to get an all on four for the upper anyway. And so <clears throat> um, that case is kind of like, a, you'd be kind of on the fence about that case, right? Cause she's still got a lot of good teeth. And um, so not exactly sure how to recommend patients that are kind of like borderline, whether they're, um, they're not in terminal dentition, but they want to get an all on four. So anyway, that's an interesting kind of case. You probably notice that her lower teeth, she's in crossbite, so her lower teeth might need some ortho. So I encourage her, encourage her to get some ortho treatment. Um, but anyway, if you have any questions about the case, drop them in the comments and <clears throat> I'm happy to, uh, to go over it with you. Oh, by the way, the, the um, software that I was using is Blue Sky Bio. It's free, it's really good, so I, I definitely recommend it. And I uh, just wanna show you these little kits I'm putting together in case you haven't seen it yet. <clears throat> these little implant boxes are super cool. I, I like them anyway. They're, for anybody taking our online course, we're making these little kits available. They got some little drilling, some little drills, insertion tools, mandible, dummy implants. So it's like an add-on to our, uh, our course. But I was just trying to think of like any way that I can make this stuff more convenient for you guys to learn. And I think this would be a really cool way. But anyway, uh, reach out to me, shoot me a comment.